So you actually, you saw Bill Hicks perform. Okay, so I was this young comedian in Chicago, it was like 93, and I was a hot shot. I was like, I was the, I got this figured out. And so I went down to uh, this place called The Funny Firm in Chicago, and they always have to have funny names. It can't just be the Comedy Palace or the Chicago or, Comedy or Theater. Mike, it can't be Mike's or it something. Yeah, like. <laughs> it can't be Johnson's Comedy Theater. It always has to be something giggles or ha-has or the funny firm or the funny farm or the, so I went to the, but it was a beautiful room. I mean, mm -hmm. the, and that was the thing that you go into these places like all the funny firm and it was beautiful, right? It was two tiered and they had great lighting and anyway. So I hear this guy, Bill Hicks is, I don't even, I didn't even know who he, who he was. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, I'm in my special seat and getting ready to watch the headliner this week. And uh, about five minutes in, I started to feel horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And about 15 minutes in, I started drinking. <laughs> and after he was done, I didn't know what to do. I, I swear to God, it was demoralizing because and no matter who I had seen as a comedian before, like even George Carlin, who to me is my, you know, the inspiration for me to start comedy, mm -hmm. and George Carlin, one of my all-time heroes, even when I saw him, I always thought like, you know, I, maybe I could do that. Maybe. If everything works out right, maybe I could do that. But when I saw Bill Hicks, I knew there was no way I was ever gonna, I was never, ever gonna be that good. And it just bothered me so <laughs> much. It was just like, I'm always gonna be competing for second place, no matter what I do, because Bill Hicks was just so far, he was just so far beyond. Now, now in what sense was it like his, his delivery or his material or, or I mean, how could you quantify he could You know, um, they say like music touches a certain part of your brain, humor touches a certain part of your brain, drama touches a certain part of your brain, empathy, sympathy, they all different parts of your brain light up. He could touch almost all of them at once. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was unbelievable how he could, you know, he made me think on a deeper level with more clarity about certain things that I had ever, and it was all about how to think. You know, it was comedy by thinking correctly and presenting it to you, it was like, this is how you're supposed to think. This is how you're supposed to be skeptical of everything. Here is the, the logic train, and this is why this is funny, and this is why most of what you believe is bullshit. Right, and, and I think there's also, there's also that interesting thing where because you laugh, he's like, I'm gonna present these ideas to you in such a way that they will be so clear Crystal that you will clear. laugh at the fact that you had not gotten it before or laugh at how wonderful and elegant this presentation is. Yes, it's one of those things like you can't deny the logic of what he's saying. Even if you're on the opposite, if you don't believe what he's saying. Like if you are, like he, he, a lot of his thing was that uh, he wasn't pro-drug, but he was anti-drug enforcement. He thought, you know, that it's hypocrite. Again, he, you know, he kind of very easily spelled out how the drugs laws in America or anywhere are hypocritical, contradictory, inconsistent, and he did that in a hilarious way, right? And he did it in a personal way. Like he took this idea that he had about uh, our culture, and then he made it personal. Like he told a personal story that made a bigger point. Mm -hmm. So he could do both. Like most comedians do one or the other. Most people tell, tell personal stories, or some people are observational comics, you know? Like, you know, like Dennis Miller and Bill Maher, they'll look at politics and the world and they had, and from the outside, right. you know? Whereas Bill would do that, but then it would be also told through this intense personal story. Mm -hmm. that uh, was filled with like painful humor. And there's a lot, of, a lot of darkness in his comedy, a lot of pain, which is where comedy comes from. You right. know, if everybody was happy all the time, you wouldn't need comedy.